Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, I'm going to be teaching you an original tune that I wrote, which was inspired by the movie Interstellar. Now, if you've seen this movie, then you know that Matthew McConaughey's character goes on this epic journey through space and time. And when I was composing this tune, I had his journey in mind, but I, I was also thinking about the soundtrack that was paired to his journey. And the composer that wrote the music for Interstellar is none other than Hans Zimmer, who's an absolute genius. So I had all these kind of thoughts and ideas in my head, and it's the reason why I decided to call it The Explorer. So. With that in mind, let's take a step back and let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play the first half of the tune. But if you want to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's going to be available at this link. Or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for The Explorer. Now also on that page will be the on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play. You can watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish. Just a great asset for learning this song that much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into learning this tune, but there are a few things that we wanna to touch on first. The first thing is, this is for baritone ukulele, so make sure you grab the baritone ukulele. The second thing I wanna talk about is our right hand approach for finger picking. Now, the majority of this tune, pretty much like 99% of it, you can use a three finger approach for finger picking. So that means this, that means your thumb gets string four and string three, your index finger gets string two, and your middle finger gets string one. So you can use that three finger approach pretty much throughout the entire piece. So let's go ahead and jump into learning the first couple measures, and this is going to be theme one. So there's four themes throughout this tune, and let's go ahead and take a look at the first two bars for theme one. So off the bat, you're gonna notice two things that stand out. If you look at the rhythm, you can see that we are playing all 16th notes. So that means that every single note we play, we wanna keep even, so one note doesn't last longer or less than the other. Everything stays nice and even in its duration. The second thing you're gonna notice is that there's a pattern. If you look at the tab, you can see that we have a pull off on the first string, followed by an open second string and an open third string. That makes the first set of four notes, right? The first set of sixteenths. Look at beat two, and then beat three, and then beat four for this first bar. You've got that same pull off followed by open two, open third string, right? If you look at the rest of that measure and measure two, you've got the exact same thing. So literally we have a repetitive right hand picking pattern and our left hand's doing the same thing as well. We're just doing a pull off followed by an open second string and an open third string. Remember, we want to tie that all to 16th note rhythm, so throughout this whole piece, or throughout this theme one, I should say, you want to be thinking one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, okay? So let's see if we can try that together. Now remember, we're using that three finger approach for finger picking, so you know which finger to use for the right hand. But go ahead and take your middle finger on your left hand, put it on that second fret on the first string, and I want you to play that note, followed by a pull off. Then you're gonna play string two and string three, okay? So just get comfortable with that. Try to keep it nice and even at this slow speed. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh. so try and join me. Good. Now sometimes it can be hard to keep that pull off at that same speed, right, as those single note plucks, right? Sometimes you want to speed up and do a quick little pull off. So really, really focus 
and be really cognitive that you're not rushing that and slowing the other parts down. Okay, so we want everything to be even. So start slow. Don't worry about going that fast at the get-go, but start really, really slow. And remember, speed comes in time. Let's go ahead and play just this first measure. So go ahead and back, put your middle finger back on the second fret of string one. Give me a pull off to the open, second string, and then third string. Remember, keep it nice and even because it's eighth note. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So we're doing that four times in a row. If you look at measure three, we already know we go up to the third fret. So just move up a half step. And you can notice four times in a row there as well. So let's try these first two bars together. Maybe we'll go, that's a good speed. One, two, three, four, with me. Beautiful. Now let's take a look at measure three and four. So again, we notice that all 16ths and we're keeping that pattern for our right hand going. So if you look at measure three, we're up to the fifth fret. And then if you look at measure four, we're back down to the third fret. So pretty simple, right? So here's one little tip because there are some movement. There's a little bit of movement in this tune. Remember that your ukuleles, they have dots and you can use those dots as your guides. Now, unfortunately, every ukulele isn't uniform. So sometimes the first dot shows up on the third fret, like mine, sometimes it shows up on the fifth fret. So just take a look at what you've got, but you want to memorize your dots. First dot is three, second dot is five, the third dot is seven, the fourth dot is nine, and the double dot is 12. So you get those dots and the frets memorized and you can jump around the neck much easier. And remember, the dots are on top too, so you don't have to turn the uke like that to look at them. But we're going up to the second dot, so the fifth fret, and then back to the first dot for the third fret. So let's see if we can try that together. So measure three into four, and this beat's good. One, two, three, four. Beautiful. Now, if you listen to me play one through four, this is what we've got so far. Now, I blazed through that, right? So I don't want you guys to go that fast just yet. Instead, what I want you to do is to just hit pause on the video, grab a metronome, because a metronome is always gonna keep perfect timing. So figure out a tempo that is good for where you're at and play along to the metronome. Try to tap your foot as you go through it. One, two, three, four, and try to count at least the quarter notes, right? You don't have to go one E and a two E and a three E. That's a lot of talking. But try to tap your foot and count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, Four, as you go throughout this, it's really good practice to do the tapping and the counting. It really ingrains the rhythm in your brain. So let's go ahead and move on now. Let's take a look at measure five and six. And for this measure, it's gonna get a little bit tougher because we're playing out of a fretted chord. Now, most of us know this chord as the dominant. It's just a standard D7. But the thing is with this tune, the bass note is really the second fret on string four. And you can hear the difference when we add just this one note. You can hear how that chord takes on more of that diminished quality than it does if you have an open. Quite a big difference in how the sound is. And that's the beauty of this tune because the first stuff that we're playing out of, it's this minor, E minor to diminished. 
and it gives a kind of a, a real sinister type of sound, right? Like the dark side of the force, not the light side, so to speak. But going back into learning how to play this. So I think most of us know the chord shape. If not, it's on the graph right there. What makes it a little bit harder is that we've got to do the pull off with the ring finger to the open string. And then we're following up with the same pattern, second, third. So just take a moment, try and play this with me. Okay, when you're comfortable with that, look at measure six. It's going to go to the third fret, so keep second and index anchored, and use your pinky to do the pull off, three to open. So when you get comfortable with that, if we put them together, that's what we end up with. So let's see if we can try that together. It may be a little bit slower, like, here we go. So a little bit trickier with those two bars, but if we move on to the next two, if you look at measure seven, you can see we're doing back to what we did exactly for measure five. And here in measure eight is where our pattern changes. So we have a double pull off, but we're also changing our right hand approach. So I want you guys to do this. Go back to this diminished shape. What you're gonna do is you're going to lift the ring finger up and the middle finger, so keep only the index planted. Then take that ring finger, put it on the third fret of string one, and you're going to pluck that note, follow up, followed by a pull off to the second fret. So you've gotta use your middle finger for that. And then a pull off to the open. So you have three, two, open. After that, you're going to play the second string. So three, two, oh, second string. Now watch my right hand. Middle finger, index. So I'm just alternating it, and it makes it a little bit more efficient than using one finger bouncing between two strings. So give that a shot. And remember, we're keeping it still at sixteenths. So you don't want to rush that double pull off. So try to keep that even. So come and join me and we'll go this speed. Okay, so this is gonna be the hardest transition you've got. So I want you to try and play that with me. I'm just gonna loop it a couple times. Here we go. Now. Back. Tricky, tricky stuff, right? Now you can use a little slow down on the YouTube player if you need to go a little bit slower. But that's where I would spend most of my time practicing because that's just kind of, it's not only a hard shape to transition to, but it's also throws off your picking pattern because it's very linear. And then it's still linear, but we have a lot going on on the first string. So that makes it a little bit tricky. So that's probably where you're gonna put the bulk of your practice in. But if I backtrack and I play five through eight, I end up with this. Pretty cool stuff once you get some speed to it. So at this point, you've got pretty much the bulk of theme one learned, right? So you just want to
take a second and cycle through those eight measures. Remember, go at the speed that's comfortable for you before you try to build up the speed. Slow and fast, or slow and steady always wins the race. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. Now, if we move on to looking at what comes next, if I look at measure nine and 10, I'll put the tab up right here, you're gonna notice something. It's just repeats. It's exactly the same as the first two bars. If we look at the next couple, so 11 and 12, We see something familiar again. 11 is identical to measure three, so you're back to five. But at 12, we have a variation. We're gonna jump between sev, five. Okay? So a slight, a slight little switch up makes the music, you know, that much more interesting. Sometimes all you have to do is a tiny variation to breathe new life into a repetitive part. So try that with me, Sev, five. We're just going back and forth. And that's it. So what you wanna keep in mind is the first three bars, so nine, 10, 11, identical to one, two, three. get to the 12th bar, we have a variation. Okay, so I'll cycle through those four. If you want, you can try with me. So maybe one, two, three, four. Now, if we go into the next couple measures, so 13 and 14, again, we're gonna notice something. They're identical to five and six. And then if we look at uh, 15 and 16, 15 was identical to measure seven. Look at 16. Identical to measure eight. So. 13, 14, 15, 16, identical to five, six, seven, and eight. But we have one extra measure to finish up this theme one. So let's put up 17 as a whole. And you can see that we are going to start out with the same first half that we did for the last measure. But if you look at the second half, starting on B3, We've got a way to end theme one and transition us into theme two. So look at the third beat. So we're starting out with the same three, two, open. So we've got the same double pull off, but then we're gonna take our ring finger, play the third fret on string two to the first fret, so lift that up. It's your index, which has been anchored the whole time, right? Play that, followed by a pull off, then to the second fret on string three, and then open string two. So we have, starting on B3, three, two, oh, three, one, oh, two, oh. So take a second just to get comfortable with that. And let's see if we can try that together. Let's keep it even 16th. So one E, oops, three E and a four E and a one E and a two E. E, let's go. Three E and a, four E and a. Nice. So that's gonna be our little ending. And you can see that I put a little retardando. So you wanna start to do a little slow down on that third beat. So here's how I would practice this ending of theme one. I would start on measure 16. So you've got four times You want to literally count that out. One, two, three, four. 
then when you go to measure 17, you want to count out three of them. One, two, three. This third one, it's going to be the start of the end. Okay, so you've got four for measure 16, three for measure 17. But I would count it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That might make it a little bit easier. So I'll put up 16 going into 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, sev. And start to do the little retardando. So that's going to be your cheat sheet for memorizing how many times to play it. Because if you're in the moment, How many times have I played it? <laughs> you know, sometimes you can get a little lost with how many times you've repeated it. So try just trying to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then start that ending. Okay? So that's going to be everything for uh, the first theme. So our big takeaway is that it's very repetitive, right? It's not only repetitive in the rhythm, the rhythm is all 16th notes, but it's also repetitive in our right hand approach for picking it, but it's also repetitive in the fact that once you learn the first eight bars, the next eight are pretty much all identical, right? A couple variation uh, in the middle and at the end. So I'm gonna cycle through uh, the entire uh, first theme and that'll give us a gist of everything that we've learned. And then we'll take a look at what theme number two brings to the table. Okay, so going into theme number two, we're gonna be playing out of four chord shapes. The first one is really easy. It's one that we've played a million times. We're just doing a standard E minor. But something is not really standard with it. I'm using my thumb to grab it. You don't have to do that. You can use the middle finger. But for me, I just find it comfortable to do this, probably because of my background as a guitar player. And I'm sure a lot of us that have a baritone, we also play guitar, so grabbing chords using our thumb for the bass notes is something that we tend to do a lot of. Maybe because we're emulating Mr. Jimi Hendrix a lot, he did that a lot. <laughs> but I'm gonna use my thumb for the top. Now, with this tune, or this bar, or this theme, I should say, we again have a repetitive right hand picking pattern. So our pattern is going to be four, three, two, three, one, two, three, one. And this kind of opens the door for two ways to finger pick it. We can use a four finger approach where each finger gets its own string. Or you can keep doing the three finger. Remember, thumb gets string four and three. So either or work, and feel free to use either one or a hybrid. It's up to you, whatever fits your playing style. But you want to get that pattern memorized. Four, three, two, three, one, two, three, one. Get that memorized. Let's try together. Four, three, two, three, one, two, three, one. Four, three, two, three, one, two, three, one. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice is it's all eighth notes, right? So no longer are we doing the quick 16th notes. We're reverting to just eighth notes, okay? So keep that in mind. Whatever you're playing, whatever speed you were doing this at, right, don't go, 
you have this crazy fast speed to try and match theme one to theme two. Mm -mm. You're playing literally eighth notes, so you're playing tw twice as slow. <laughs> so keep that in mind. So I think uh, the first bar for this theme two is really easy. Let's look at the next one, so measure 19. We're playing out of an F sharp minor 11. So to make this chord, we're just gonna take our ring, put it on four on string four, index is two on string three. And for this one, we're just going to be doing the exact same pattern. So we have four, three, two, three, one, two, three, one. So this is not a hard chord shape at all because two strings are open. So let's see if we can do this. We'll go from the first chord to the second chord. And let's try with that pattern. One and two and three and four, go. Not too bad, right? Taking a look at our next couple bars, we're going up to a G6. So to do this transition, all we're gonna do is we're going to lift our index finger up, we don't need it, move the ring up to five, and put the middle finger down on four on string three. We still have two strings open underneath. So same picking pattern. And let's look at what happens in the next measure, which is measure 21. Move this shape up a whole step. So you're going five, four to seven, six gives us an A with an added nine. So a really easy transition. And beautiful sounding chords, they're open voice chords. They sound really cool. And as you guessed, we're gonna start the same. Four, three, two, three. But look at the last half. Changes, we've got a little melody that we're filling in at the end. So to do this last change, you're gonna take the pinky, add it to seven on string one, pluck the open second string along with that, then hit string four, and then lift the pinky up, add your index to five on string one, pluck that with the open second. So you have seven plucked, four, five plucked. So four, three, two, three, pluck, four, pluck. It's a little tricky at the end, but not too bad. If we backtrack, Let's see if we can try those two together and at about this speed. And two and three and ready, go. One and two and three and four and... Cool, the other thing to take note is that that last note is a quarter. So we're just gonna hold it out for a full beat. So if I recap, theme two, it's only four bars. gets repeated. Okay, let's see if we can try those four together. We'll go about one and two and three and four, go. Remember, two times, we cycled through one time only. So you're just gonna repeat that twice. And that gives you all of theme two. So theme two, I think all of us would agree, was a lot easier to play than theme one. And that's where we're gonna end this lesson video because the part two one, we're gonna take a look at theme three, which is probably my favorite theme. And it's gonna be the hardest theme to play. the first half of it. You can already see that we've got some crazy stretches, but that melody run that we're playing across strings one, two, and three, absolutely beautiful, and really takes us kind of to the next phase of the journey, so to speak, if we're thinking back to what this song was about, which was, you know, being inspired by Matthew McConaughey's character in Interstellar. 
So guys, I want to give you a friendly reminder. If you wanted to get the tabs to print and keep for your records, that was available at this link, or you can go to the site, rockclass101.com, do a search for the Explorer. Also on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab here, which is really helpful for this tune because you can literally highlight bars and you can loop them. You can slow it down to any speed you want. And you can loop as much as you want. You want to do two bars? You can do two bars, you can do three bars, you can do four bars. It's really a really cool tool for getting songs like this, which are a little bit harder down. All right, guys, so again, I hope you enjoyed it. This was a ton of fun for me to write, and I will see you in the part two one. Take care.